Uh, today's topic is going to be about healing. I obviously deal with this a lot with my profession, and something I've been focusing on this new year is I'm so used to breaking people down with weight training and putting them through essentially pain, and I really feel like God put on my heart this year to build people back up. So there is this site that I follow called Eating Psychology, and it is awesome. I refer to it a lot for myself and for my clients through how to coach through multiple things with mindset and how that ties into eating because how you view food and how you view yourself and how you view the world around you has to do with how you nourish yourself. And the gal who started this program was talking about how a lot of people come to her and they voice all these concerns with things they're trying to heal from, whether that's an ailment or pain or bone or joint issues or mental health. And they're always looking for outlets as opposed to turning back to their inner voice and realizing that they have a choice with healing themselves um, besides going to a doctor or besides going to a chiropractor or besides going to a health coach or whatever that may be, um, a lot of times people look to other outlets and do too many things too fast before they slow down and think about, okay, what is the root of this issue? And one particular story she was talking about was this client was having trouble with getting enough calcium and she encouraged them to go back to that initial starting point with you have a voice, you have a choice, and your metabolic rate is determined on sleep, pollution, stress, portion control, spirituality, touch, and love. And specifically with calcium, it is not only dependent on the nutrients in your food, but it is scientifically proven that proper calcium intake depends on the feelings in your heart and the thoughts in your head. That is just as important as the food you eat. So once I heard that, that got me thinking, wow, okay, so God was saying that from the very beginning, as he always does. That's why the Bible is the most exquisite and extraordinary book of knowledge that we will ever come across. Because God knows this, and he always tries to teach us things from every different facet of life. So it brought me to Proverbs 3.8. And it says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So just as eating psychology was saying, we got to go back to the root of who we are. And our identity is rooted in Christ. He created us. He made us. He knows us better than anybody ever will. So before we are wise in our own eyes, or before we are going to doctors or nutritionists or personal trainers and or mental health professionals or whatever that may be, we need to slow down and turn back to the maker of our souls and the maker of our bodies because that's where ultimate healing starts. And of course, those outlets are wonderful. I mean, I'm one of those outlets and I love coaching people and encouraging people and transforming people's lives. Um, that's definitely my purpose on this earth, and I'm so blessed to be able to do that. But it starts with what Proverbs 3.8 is saying if you want to receive healing. Fear the Lord, which means having an awe, a respect, an ultimate point of truth, and submission to God, realizing and giving him ultimate control of your life, and then shunning evil. And shunning evil means intentionally or persistently avoiding, turning away from, ignoring evil. So it becomes a practice that you are ignoring these bad people, places, or things. According to scripture and according to God, which as Christians, we believe that's the ultimate point of truth, that is going to bring us healing. And that is something we have to trust in and believe in as believers. And maybe that won't happen right away, you know, God has us in different seasons for a reason, reason, and a lot of times that's to draw us back to him. But I always want to encourage you guys to look back to what scripture says before you go to other outside sources for your healing. And then I kind of wanted to add two other ones that I believe are really important too. Um, so besides, you know, fearing the Lord and shunning evil, I also believe that if you want to receive healing, you have to petition and according to Philippians 4, 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything, by prayer and petition, present your requests to God. Now, I've read that verse multiple times. I'm sure a lot of you have as well. That's a very common and popular verse in scripture. But it says, in everything, by prayer and petition, present your requests to God. Petition is a written, formal request. How I've missed that so many times. I don't know about you guys, but I've read that so many times, and I've just looked at the word prayer. God is asking us to take the time, journal, write it down, and submit a request to him like he is the big boss upstairs, because that is ultimately what fearing the Lord is. We recognize his control and his leadership and his authority in our life, and we have to take him 100% seriously and like he is the number one boss and leader in our life if we want to step into this healing. And then finally, seeking his face. That is the last and probably the most important point. And once again, when we are called to seek the Lord's face, I mean, that is through scripture hundreds of times. And that can be interpreted too in different ways. Um, And it can look different for person to person. But I'll just tell you a story of something moderately radical, I guess, that I did when I said, you know what, God, I want to receive healing from this in my life, and I'm serious about it, and I fear you. I'm trying to turn away from evil the best that I can, trying to avoid certain people, places, or things that are causing harm in my life, and I've petitioned, but you know what? I'm going to take it to the next step, and there was things that I was dealing with in my life, in my early walk with Christ, that were shameful, and a lot of things I haven't told people because um, I, you know, I wanted to deal with that with the Lord one-on-one, and then I also had some accountability partners helping me through that, but I was ready for healing, and I don't know about you guys, but you kind of get to a point where you're like, I'm done. I'm done dealing with this. I want to receive healing today, so I decided to take God seriously, and I decided to take the word seriously, and like always, I encourage you guys to do that, and a lot of times when you read in scripture, It'll say, on the 10th month of the 8th day, or on the 7th month of the 20th day. And a lot of times things like that will start when something important is going to happen, or there's a battle, or there's healing, or something significant happens when certain chapters start like that. So I decided to take that literally. And I was reading, I believe it was in Kings, and it said, on the 7th month of the 10th day. And then the story continued to unfold, and miracles happened that day. And I said, you know what, God, I'm going to pen that out. I'm going to open my calendar. So on the seventh month, that's July, and the 10th day, that's July 10th. So I'm going to take that day off of work, my busiest day, which was a Wednesday, and I'm going to hike in Taylor's Falls, just you and I, with my Bible and with my book called Bondage Breakers, which was about healing from snares or very painful things or, you know, trying to essentially become the person God created you to be. And there's certain things that were holding me back and, you know, still hold me back from, you know, coming through the full force of sanctification. So I did. And I I took that day off of work. And honestly, you guys, the enemy is so persistent because the closer I got to that day, things started popping up. Clients wanted to train that day. I was really anxious and my schedule was crazy. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I cannot take this day off of work. There's just no way. And I just kept hearing God press on my heart and say, you know what, Courtney, this this is real and this is going to heal you. And this is a step of obedience that you can take to come into my presence. So here I am on Wednesday, July 10th, and I'm missing seven sessions, which is a lot of clients. And, you know, of course, they have to roll over then. So they roll over into Thursday and Friday, taking some clients on Saturday as well. And I pack up a little backpack with some snacks and some water and my Bible and my bondage breaker book, and I hike. And I hike for a long time all by myself. I had my little knife on me. Paul would have been proud. And I climbed to the highest point I could find, and I sat down, and I just, once again, I just started taking scripture literally. I had a little candle. I lit some incense. God says he loves when he hears aromic prayers and And I was just doing these acts of submission. I didn't really know how it was supposed to go. And I just started reading this Bondage Breakers book out loud because it it calls you to start fighting the enemy, putting on the full armor of God, Ephesians 6, and saying that, you know, we do not fight against flesh and blood, but we fight this invisible war that so many people don't see. And we are called to wake people up to that. And and I'm awake to that. And I was so ready to start healing. 
And it was kind of funny because I put all my requests, my petition, on this sheet of paper, and I turned it into a little airplane, and I meant to throw it in the river, but it spiraled down and caught in the side of the rock where people were hiking. And I'm thinking, oh, great, now people are going to know all my sins and all my shameful things. And then I thought, oh, well, what the heck? I mean, if, if that's going to bring somebody to the Lord, then I guess by all means. And, and I blew up my candle. I was up there for about three hours, just God and I. And I, you guys, I'm not making this up. I've never felt so much peace and so much tranquility and so much ease. And I could, I could hear God. I was just, it was just he and I. And I just, I know that's how I'm going to leave this earth someday. It's just going to be he and I. And I, I never want to lose sight of that because when that day comes, I want to be prepared for it. And I started healing from those things, you guys. And no, I'm not 100% healed. But it is a night and day difference to where I was because I took that act of submission, because I made an effort to come into his presence. And yeah, I guess that's a little radical for some of you listening to this, but it was such a release. And it was so cool to just read something and say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I don't care how it looks. I'm just going to go through with it. And God worked, and he moved, and miracles were happening. And I just felt like I was who I was supposed to be in that moment, and everything made sense. And I just want to close with that, you know, before you guys go see a professional or before you start taking all these tests to try to heal from this thing that's off in you, do not be wise in your own eyes. Look to the Lord. He created you. Therefore, he knows you better than anybody else ever will in your life. Fear him, avoid evil, petition and journal and write and seek his face. The Bible is the biggest treasure chest we will ever find on this earth. And there's so many truths. You just have to dig for it. Thank you for listening. God bless.